Welcome back to the first mini PC review of the year, and it's the Cardus Mine 2. This is the upgrade to the mine that I have covered previously, and it now features the Meteor Lake in this one. So it's an updated chipset, so it has the Core Ultra 7 155H that has a 28 watt power limit, but they've set it to 64, and it still is basically the same exact design. So it's very small, However, I finally have this, which I was waiting for, and that is the GPU dock that they have for it, that you can buy, it's an optional extra. This is called the Mind Graphics, and what it has is an RTX 4060 Ti in it. You can get it with eight gigabytes of VRAM or 16, which I have here with this model. So you're not only just getting the graphics, you get some additional ports out of it too as well. So it's a very flexible mini PC in a proper mini PC size. I mean, I can fit this easily into my pocket. And I'll show you what it's all about in this review. All right, so let's have a look at what we get first with the Mine 2. We have our unit, and I'll go over the ports in a bit more detail about this, but very good build quality. It's exactly the same as the first one, at least on the outside, it's the internals that have changed. There's a little bit of paperwork right here, and then we have our charger and its cable. Now this charger, this is type C, and the output from this is 65 watts, which is good considering the size of it. So what I would call a proper mini PC size. This is pocketable, you can fit it in your pocket, and very light too. It's 435 grams, and it's around about two centimeters to thickness. So left and right, we have the air intake and the exit vent here for it. So you do feel a bit of hot air coming out of this when it is on. The Cardus brand there on the top, power on button with a status LED. Now it has an internal battery here. It's very small, it's only 5.5. 55 watt hours, but it's enough for it to maintain standby so you can easily power this down and take it to a new location Plug in a monitor or whatever so you can move from say work to home and you'll be able to do that and it's a 24 25 in fact hour standby time you do get with this So build quality excellent made out of this alloy that has this nice brush finish to it so it is matte metal all alloy and really good feeling Really good quality to it. So we've got USB Type A's on the back here. These are USB 3.2s. So they support 10 gigabits per second, both of them. HDMI 2.1, then we've got a Thunderbolt. Uh, this one right here, you can see the little Thunderbolt logo. So that's Thunderbolt 4, that's 40 gigabits per second. And USB 4, also the 40 gigabits per second. So that's all you get for the ports, unless of course you plug it into dock that I showed in the first video or the Mind Graphics, which I'll show you now. An expandable storage, well, very easy to access. Press down here, it lifts up, and you can install yourself then a 2230 PCIe 4.0 SSD for expandability if you want more than the one terabyte these units come with. So this is the part I wanted to originally review when I did cover the Mind, and now I have got the Mind 2 and finally then this graphics. This has an RTX 4060 Ti in this. Now you can get it with eight gigabytes of DDR6 RAM or 16 that I have here. So 16 means we're not gonna be bottlenecked with some of those games that need a lot of VRAM here. Now this is a desktop card, so this is not a mobile one. And you can see we've got some additional ports here. So we have an SD card slot, very good for people that use SD cards a lot like YouTubers like myself, 3.5 millimeter Thunderbolt. So yes, you can power this and connect up other devices just with the Thunderbolt 4. Okay, so you can have that for an eGPU setup. Now you can't remove the GPU from this. It's not like you could upgrade it. So I can't go and later put in say a 4070 Super in this or a 4090, it's just not gonna be possible unfortunately. LED here, it does sit on these two nice solid rubber feet and it's got its own gun power supply within it, which is 300 watts. So it's pretty good, it's all there. It's quite a hefty unit, but again, very good build quality. See, we've got display port here and then our HDMI 2.1s on the back. So they are capable of 8K and you can get, of course, 4K 120 and whatnot. Then you've got more Type-C USB 3.2s on the back, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and then out power in for all of this. This is the power on button. So on the side here, nothing that is on the right hand side of it. On the left, there's a fingerprint scanner, which does work with Windows Hello. There's some microphones and volume 
up and down. There's also a speaker that's built into this, which is not bad. So how does it connect? Well, we have what's called the mine link on the bottom of the main unit, the mini PC, the mine two here. You remove that little dust protector there just for stopping, you know, bits of dust and other things getting in there. Remove the other one that's here and they simply plug in. There's even magnetics, mag magnets there, sorry, that pull it into place and just give it a gentle push down. That's it. It's now in place and you can see it's a real smart, tidy looking setup here to have a mini PC and then a desktop GPU. Very good. I really like the look of this. Here is the BIOS. It's a little bit disappointing because it is very locked down to us. So under advanced settings, really we don't have anything that we can change that is worthwhile apart from maybe the virtualization here and then tweak some of the active cores for the efficient and performance cores, your typical security settings and the boot order there you can change, but it is quite limited. I wish it was a completely unlocked and open BIOS, which it certainly is not. So when you look at the price, this is an expensive mini PC because I've got the Ultra 7 155H model here with the 32 gigabytes of RAM and all versions have the one terabyte and you are looking at 1100 US dollars. And if you get a 64 gigabyte version, it's gonna be even more expensive. Now you can see there's a difference in the RAM speed. The 64 gigabyte version is using LPDDR5X RAM slightly faster there, and you get the two terabyte uh, SSD, but you can upgrade and add an SSD as I showed you underneath with all of the different models there. So before I get into some benchmarks and show you that performance, just wanna point out here that it does come with Windows 11 Home and you get what is called uh, their Mind app. And the Mind app lets you have a look at the Mind 2 here. So there's a few options you get, which is the power mode, uh, all the performance benchmarks and stuff I've been running in the performance mode. I've already set that with Windows 2 as well. Uh, you can tell it what to do when unplugged to hibernate. That's probably what most people want because it's a very small battery. But if you hibernate it, it's gonna last quite a bit of time there, about 25 hours and sleep that is hibernate, I think is a little less there, uh, but you're able to change that. Smart charge, so only charge it to 80%. This is to help, of course, protect and prolong that battery. Driver updates here, uh, device upgrade, and that is actually just the Windows updates there. And it's got recommendations for the dock. Now down here, you can see the mining graphics, which is our dedicated GPU, that RTX 4060 Ti with a 16 gigabytes of RAM. You've got firmware updates. You can set the LED light at the front to be a different color if you want. And that is really it. So it's simple software. It's not evasive or anything like that. And it's useful with the BIOS updates and firmware updates of the product. Now that one terabyte SSD I've got with this model, let's take a look at the speeds. It isn't bad. Now this uh, model here, just the terabyte, if you get the 32 gigabytes of RAM, if you want two terabytes, then it will probably be about similar kind of speeds. They're using the same supply there for the SSD. And as I showed you and mentioned before, you can just add more storage to if you wanted to do so. So there are a few benchmarks here that I'll show you, but just before I do, I wanted to point out one thing here with this chip, that it is last gen now, because this is Media Lake, when you have the Lunar Lake, and there's going to be newer chips coming, of course. We've got 16 cores, six of which are performance, eight are efficiency, and then the low power efficient cores, another two there. So 22 threads in total. Seems like a lot. And well, it is. And maximum turbo of 4.8 gigahertz there. It's a 28 watt part. Now, they do have uh, this here configured not to the 28, well that's our base power limit, but 64 for power limit level one and two that they've gone with Gahardus. So they've upped it slightly, could be a bit higher. I'll let you know the thermals later on. So if you're looking at integrated graphics, our benchmark scores here, well this is what you're gonna get with that Intel Arc graphics. And I mean, it's fine. The graphics score for integrated graphics is okay. We're now getting up to about 4,000 now with the Lunar Lake and CPU score there fairly decent. Now, 
If you're going to be running Geekbench, which I've just done now, you see you're going to get single core scores of just over 2,300. Multi-core score, that is actually better than the Lunar Lake because the Lunar Lake has eight cores and it's not, they're not threaded cores, so it's just the eight cores. So this with the 22 threads has a big improvement there because normally with Lunar Lake, you see about 8,000 points. This is 12. So CPU side of things, it's still pretty good for 2025. Now with, of course, the dedicated GPU now, with that 16 gigabytes of RAM times by, you can see it's a big difference here. So we've gone from 3,569 to now 12,531. Graphics score over 13,500. So about 11,000, 10,000 points is a 4060 if it's the mobile chip. And if you're looking at a 4070 mobile chip, normally about 12,000 points. So this being a desktop card and a 16 gigabytes of RAM helping a little bit here, we're getting just over 13. So that's a very good score. So benchmarks, I know I'm not showing you a lot here. I want to try and speed the video up just a little bit, but you kind of, we know the performance of the Ultra 7 155H anyway. So let's have a look at a couple of other things and that is playback now of video files. Very good. So demanding video files like this one right here, which is the jellyfish file, it's going to play really without any problems at all. And that is the RTX 4060 Ti handling it. So using its CUDA cores and all good, the playback, no problems with that. And if I was to play 4K files, which I'll just quickly do, same story, very good playback performance here. Apologize for that sound just there. That's the uh, speaker that's built into the Mind graphics. So the playback of that is all very good. The system does feel snappy. The 32 gigabytes of RAM runs at 6,400 mega transfers too. And here is our CityBench R23 score. So we're just over 14,000 points for multi-core score and just over 1,700 for the single core score. Editing video with Adobe Premiere Pro here, the latest version is very good thanks to that RTX 4060 Ti. So it's not just for gamers, that 16 gigabytes of RAM, probably not needed for video editing, but if you're gonna be doing CAD work and you need a lot of, lot of VRAM, then it certainly is gonna help out. And even some games, they do tend to max out with eight gigabytes not being sufficient enough and run into some performance issues. That's completely removed with that 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So this performance, really good. No lags at all with the RTX 4060 Ti. Export times are very quick because we do have, at least with Adobe Premiere Pro, we have the acceleration of the Intel Art graphics with QuickSync and then the NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti is doing most of the work. So this clip, which is just over 10 minutes long, encoding it using the YouTube 4K preset, is just about to finish up now. Once the 100% bar is gone completely, I'll stop the timer here. But it should be under three minutes for this 10 minute and 40 second clip that I am encoding. And there we go, right on three minutes. That's quick for 4K with the YouTube preset. This first game I'm testing is Cyberpunk 2077 and I do have it set to 1440p. And on the medium preset, you can see we're getting a decent frame rate here of 70 frames per second. I would probably lower it down to the low settings preset and that would give us over 100. Now I'm not using any ray tracing here uh, none of that upscaling or any of that sort of stuff. So the performance here is just the raw performance to give us a good kind of idea of what to expect. So it can game and VRAM usage while well, checking on it before I've seen that with some games, it can definitely go over the eight gigabytes you typically see with an RTX 4060 Ti. This of course having 16 will help with some games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the in-game benchmark I'll be running here. At this time, 4K, and it's the highest preset too. So very demanding. We'll see what the result is. And I managed to get an average at 4K here, highest preset of 86 frames per second.
Assassin's Creed. This is a, another one that I'll play at 4K. We'll see how it fares on the high graphics quality preset. Not looking so good, this one. Seems the CPU is limiting it somewhat. And we are looking at only around 45 frames per second. Okay, well, the gameplay here, it's 60, close to 60. But really not good enough at 4K. You want to run this game, I think, at 1440p for better frame rates. So after all that testing, how do the temperatures fare? Well, the hotspot on the GPU is 83, and the GPU itself did not go over the GPU core, that is, uh, 70 degrees Celsius. So that's very good. The temperatures have been fine. There's a bit of fan noise from it, and it will pull up to about 170 watts or so, which isn't bad. It's not super demanding the power demands from that particular GPU. However, we've seen this here, which is 102 degrees Celsius, 103 in fact, from our CPU. So that core Ultra 7 155H thermal throttling getting very hot. It's the downside to it is that those temperatures tend to creep right up when you do push it hard. Now fan noise. I find the fan from the mine to itself to be a little bit more louder at times than the GPU. So I'll give you a sample of the fan noise right now. If you're wondering about Linux, well, I tested out Linux Manjaro. It works fine on the mine too. And it's really good the flexibility that you're able just to pull this off and use that as a mini PC in a proper mini PC size. So if you don't get the mine dock, which I showed in the other video, you have a limited amount of ports on this. There's no ports on the front of it. But I do like the fact that if you're gonna go for the dedicated graphics, desktop class graphics to that RTX 4060 Ti, then when you plug it and slot it in, which by the way, with the magnets, very easy to do so, it gives you all those additional ports there too as well. So you get some more USB Type-A 3.2s, and you could even use this if you weren't gonna be just using the Mine 2 as an eGPU, but via Thunderbolt 4, which does have it at the front. By the way, that port will not work when you have it docked because it's either the Mine Link or the Thunderbolt 4 for the GPU connection. And once you have it plugged in, then it's not gonna work there. So good that we have the SD card slot on there. The fan noise, I think of the GPU, is not bad at all because it's a much lower frequency. However, as I pointed out, the mine too, and I gave you that sample, it can get a little noisy there and the thermal's up to 103 degrees Celsius. Performance wise, this whole setup has power for CAD video editing and even gaming as I showed you. It's capable because of that RTX 4060 Ti, much better than the art graphics, which is still relatively weak, although a little bit better than what we used to get with the Intel UHD graphics. So the biggest con of all for this setup is, you probably already know by now, is the price tag of it all. So we're looking at over $2,000 here, the setup that I have shown you in this video. And you can, of course, build a desktop PC uh, with a similar spec for cheaper or something even more powerful, a lot more powerful for similar price tag there. But you won't have this kind of form factor, this portability, this size, and it's very good, the fact that you can easily take this with you. So it's for people that really would take advantage of this form factor. If it's always gonna be sitting on your desk, you're never gonna move it about, you don't need it to be this tiny and small, then you're probably better off building your own small form factor PC or buying a pre-built one for cheaper with similar kind of performance. So that is the Cardus Mine 2 and the Mine Graphics. Thank you so much for watching this review.